We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and as we have been teasing basically since we have started the podcast, we are finally at the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka, and I'm really excited for this weekend. This is going to be a really fun race. What about you, Emily? It's finally here. Honestly, I think the thing I'm most excited about is that I'm actually going to be in the U.S. for this race, so I can actually, one, watch it kind of at a decent time and also not want to, you know, kill myself while I have to, like, try and watch it at 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I'm just excited that I get to watch it this year. Let's put it that way. So It doesn't look like there's supposed to be any rain on Sunday or what is going to be Saturday for, for most of the world. Um, so this um, will probably be a lot less hectic and crazy as last year's race, which we will get into in a little bit. What a turn of events this year. What a difference a year makes in uh, in Japan for their, uh, yeah. their Grand Prix. Oh, my goodness. Well, I feel like I, we, we just did this, Catherine. I love a back-to-back race week. Love getting to chat with you in real time. Yeah. In, so in nice. real time. Yeah, it, it is just it's, it's race after race, um, and it's... I don't know. I'm just, I'm excited that it's race weekend, even though I have a very busy weekend coming up because my sister's getting married. Um, and the race oh, is also the same that. night as the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a busy weekend for me. Um, but fortunately all the wedding festivities will be pretty much over and done with, um, by the time the race starts. So it'll be, it'll be fine. It's, I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to be ducking out of the wedding to watch a Formula One race because my sister would kill me. Um, not, that's not going to happen. Oh, I mean, maybe just like sneak breaks here and there. Just have your phone. Like, it's like those, what, Verizon commercials or whatever, like (laughs) seven years ago when they were like introducing streaming and it's like guys at weddings and they're like watching it underneath like this chairs in front of them or whatever. Um, Or like one of those all state commercials with like the, the football mayhem wedding. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be like that at all, (laughs) but it would be funny. Yeah, for sure. No, I already told my dad, I was like, we get to watch another race together. And he's like, I thought, you know, it's not at a good time. I was like, no, dad, it's a great time. It's like really late on Saturday. He's like, yeah, that's not a good time. And I was like, nope, we're watching it. (laughs) We're going to stay up. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. But before we get into that, first off, we should note that today, when this episode comes out, Thursday, uh, racing starts tonight, not tomorrow, because while it, it's currently Friday in Japan, it is Thursday in the rest of the world. So we got racing starting tonight. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This this race always gets me. I have no idea which way is up when things are happening. Um, this is the race that gets me every year. Yeah, no, it, it's a little bit of like, wait, what? Like, I, I have a very slim grasp on days of the week in general. Um, so the fact that we are a little bit out of routine and everything's starting a day ahead um, is definitely throwing me off a little bit. Thank God for my calendar. And my cal- my calendar basically tells me where I need to go and what I need to do on a daily day, like basis. Yeah, no, I... Uh... Time zones are so hard for me, and everyone who knows me knows my time zone math is horrible, so I'm like, no idea where I am in the world at any time, so this one is really just throwing me for a loop, but we have racing on Thursday, we have quali on Friday, and the race on Saturday for majority of the world. Not Japan, but the world, yes, so... Yeah. yeah, give or take, give or take a, a couple more time zones, but yeah, it's either going to be really later if, it, um, if you're in the U.S. or in the middle of the night if you're in the U.K. or a really great time of day in your if you're in Asia. Yeah, I mean Argentina. I think it's at like two o'clock in the morning, so catch the race before you go out on uh, Saturday night. So, because still trying to figure out this uh, going out culture of bars or clubs don't open until two o'clock in the morning, which is Wait. wild. Really? Oh, Catherine, this is a whole different conversation. Not on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, wild. That is definitely crazy and definitely something that, as somebody who goes to sleep, you know, around ten o'clock at night, this that's that's a lot for me. 
No, you like show up at two o'clock and no one's there. You have to wait until like two thirty, three o'clock until people like yeah. Then you're done. It. It's like Spain. I don't know. It's. I digress, but anyway. going into <laughs> getting back on track. Um, going into my favorite thing to talk about, my favorite way to start the podcast contract updates. We love um, it. We do. We love contracts here on the Going Off Track podcast. So we did get news out of McLaren on Wednesday that Oscar Piastri has ex, um, ex, an extension on his contract now through 2026 season. Um, this was with his consent. Um, <laughs> for those of you who understand the joke, but um, psh, for those of you who don't, Go back and listen to our um, F101 about silly season and you'll get the joke. Um, I think this is kind of interesting timing, but I'm here for it. I love it. I was not expecting this at all. Um, Well-deserved. Happy to see him on the grid for much longer. Um, Super happy for Oscar. Yeah, I think think it's great. I think that um, with, you know... Throughout most of the the silly season and in in and around um, you know the middle part of of the year, we've been really hearing a lot of you know people trying to poach uh, Lando Norris from McLaren, um, even though he is is locked up there for for a while. Um, but you know he's a very desirable driver. Um, so the fact that McLaren is going in and they've locked Oscar down until twenty twenty six, you know that really a shows their faith in them, which is obviously deserved um, because he's been doing phenomenally well. Um, but B is you know they that means that they know if that if you know if they do lose Lando for any reason to another team they still have Oscar and they still have Oscar confirmed for the next few years yeah and going into some not confirmed but some rumors big rumors um, big rumors wild rumors um Alphatari is rumored and expected to announce Yuki's extension with Alphatari in Suzuka this weekend at the Japanese Grand Prix. And then a little bit later, uh, Daniel's signing is to follow. So I call BS on this one of the timing. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, maybe they are going to announce Yuki's extension, but considering our timing here, we're recording this on Wednesday. It's already Thursday in Japan, if I'm doing this correctly. Probably not. I think I am. Yeah. It's already the start of the race weekend. I feel like this would have already come out to kind of like start the it weekend come out off, today. right? Yeah, exactly. And and no one has seen anything um, at all. And like it would have been cool for them to do this in his home country, his you know home race, everything like that. But I I think this is kind of debunked. I I think this may have been a projection or potential. A few weeks ago, but now that Lawson's in the car driving for Danny and doing really, really, really well, maybe they're reevaluating things a little bit and holding off on the announcement. That's my thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't think that they, for the best interest of the team, I don't think that they um, can or really should announce their their driver pairings for next year until they've had a little bit more time obviously they're going to see how how Lawson does in Suzuka this weekend which is a track that he's very familiar with because of his experience in super formula Um, but they also need to know how Daniel's going to do in the car once he comes back from his hand injury Um, and they have to you know finish testing him which is the reason why they put him in the AlphaTauri in the first place after the um, they decided to part ways with Nick DeVries so I really don't think that we're going to see um actually it it kind of occurs to me right now that they might hold off until the flashiest moment of the season to announce their driver pairings which would be in november in vegas exactly um so i i think that that's when we're gonna hear about alfatari's announcement um or maybe a different announcement for alfatari Honestly, I think it just makes sense for them to hold off. There's way too many variables. There's, you know, there are too many balls in the air right now. They just need to kind of, like, take a beat. That's my thought. 
So. Yeah, Liam Lawson is doing too good of a job right now for them to commit to Yuki and Daniel, which obviously was their initial plan um, before Daniel, you know, broke his hand. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so this next <laughs> contract, <laughs> rumor, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, I want to know the PR person who put this press release announcement out, shake their hand, whatever. It just baffles me that this is real. So someone at Williams had the audacity to say that Logan Sargent's seat is his to lose for 2024. Yeah, duh. Sure. I don't know what else there is to say there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's you know, water water is wet. Um, you know, they, they want to keep him, but he has to show that he is competent, which, duh. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, it, it really reminds me that I, I feel like this is, like, it, almost word for word exactly what Gunther Steiner said last season about Mick Haas. Yeah, I mean, Mick had his season, and he, you know, obviously lost his seat. Um but there are races left still for Logan to retain his seat, keep his seat, stay in Formula One. I just think this whole statement, the way it was put out, is funny. Like, obviously, <laughs> it's his to lose. Yeah. I just like I just think the wording is weird. And someone in who works in PR, formally, like in F1, was like, oh, yeah, well, it's his dilute. Like, I don't know. The wording is weird. How they came out with it is, I just, I find it hilarious. I digress. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of, um, you know, last week when, when George was, like, really, you know, like, I really want to win this race. What are we going to do if, so I can win this race? Last weekend in Singapore. Oh, yeah, um, when so he was really, like, like, I think that's... we should go for a win. And it's like, no, George, I think yeah. we should race for other reasons. Like, we're here to have fun. Like, the obvious, like, yeah, exactly. no der. Yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely one of those things. Um, but that's it. That's all we really have for contracts. <laughs> all we really have. Um, some some confirmations, some rumors still, but um, you we know us and our contracts. We will keep you updated. Yeah, we will we'll keep you updated on the contracts as they become finalized. Um Vegas would be a cool announcement for Alphatari, though, Kathy. And I, I do like this it uh, would. this little thing that you're cooking up here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but some other cool, interesting news uh, for Alphatari actually is the naming sponsors sponsorship. So a little bit ago, a few weeks ago, I'm again time is hard for me. Uh, don't kill me on that. Give or take. <laughs> Give or take. Um, it came out that Hugo Boss was going to be the new, you know, title naming sponsor for the Alphatari team, Hugo Boss Bulls Racing, something of the sort. But now it's coming out kind of yeah. rumored that it might be Adidas. So Adidas has thrown their hat into the ring. They're potentially a new front runner. Maybe it won't be Hugo Boss. Um, this is an interesting one to me. It just seems a little outside of the realm of who would be an F1 sponsor. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. I, you know, I think that, because as as you may or may not know, but AlphaTauri is leaving. They're, they're no longer going to be the, the name sponsor of uh, the Red Bull sister team, formerly known as Toro Rosso. Um, and so we have Hugo Boss, who really has like the the prestige type of type of brand, very similar to what we have right now with Alphatari. Um, but Adidas also has that international recognition, and I think a bigger international recognition, especially in the United States, which is also a market that Formula One is really focusing their sights on right now. Um, so I think that it would be really interesting. Um, I I don't really know which team would be the better option, you know, for, for a, you know, a name recognition sponsor. But I think that um, it's, whatever it is, I think it's going to be a really interesting team name that we're going to have to get used to for next season. I know. I just like, Adidas F1 doesn't like roll off the tongue, but neither does like Hugo Boss Bulls either. But Adidas does have a lot, they have a huge foothold in 
sporting across the world. They're in, you know, every sport. I feel like they are a sponsor in some way, shape, or form, whether it be like a corporate sponsor or an athletic gear sponsor. So getting into another sport makes sense for them as, you know, a corporation. It just seems like an an interesting pairing, maybe, we can say. But like you said, international recognition, they definitely have it. So, um, but no, it'll be interesting to see who who takes over that that naming sponsorship. So, excited to see new names on the track next year. So, yeah. And what would the the cars are going to look different too? Yeah. Well, I do. So, okay, now I really kind of want to take a step back. Adidas has really cool design and like tech team too. So I feel like their mm-hmm. liveries would be really cool. I don't know. Could be very interesting. We'll have to see. Yeah, It'll probably be like see. some random yeah. people that like we don't even care about, but whatever. It's fine. Um, yeah, but... some, some random European brand that we have never heard of. Love it. Love that for us. You know, just Americans yeah. making everything about us. Classic. Um, Obviously. <laughs> obvio, obvio. Um, Okay, so like we said, this is the Japanese Grand Prix weekend. So the Japanese GP has been around for a while. It's been on and off the calendar, but we have seen it in uh, the circulation, let's say, since the 1960s. But it's been held in Suzuka since 2009. And I feel like we always, whenever we're bringing up records and everything, it's always Michael Schumacher. Um, Michael Schumacher holds the wins record with six and McLaren holds the constructors win record with nine. And this is also kind of a, yeah, it's not a home race, but it's kind of a pseudo home race for Red Bull and AlphaTauri because they have a really close working relationship with Honda and their close ties with Honda and Honda is out of Japan. So it's kind of, we'll call it their pseudo home race. Yeah, it's not, 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 not. Um, it's also Yuki Sonoda's home race, but only his second F1 Japanese Grand Prix since the race was not held there in 2020 or 2021 because of COVID. Um, and yeah. like Catherine mentioned earlier, there's no prediction of rain. <laughs> so it will not be the same race <laughs> as last year, which I'm sure... <laughs> Everyone, including Pierre Gasly, is very excited about. Um, but Catherine, yeah. I know you've been waiting your whole podcasting career <laughs> to to talk about Suzuka Japanese Grand Prix 2022. So here is your soapbox. I told you last week I would give it to you. So here is your soapbox to talk about. Do the big debrief. Give all of your opinions because I know you have a ton. Um, and like I said, I did not watch this race. I just kind of watched the highlights and some of the recap, and I got all of the talking points from Catherine at the time. Um, so <laughs> hit it with hit us with uh, your recap of last year's race. The overarching theme of the 2022 Japanese Grand Prix was it was a whole freaking mess. The race started on time under a torrential downpour, was red flagged on the second lap, um, but the most important part about that red flag period was Pierre Gasly almost freaking died on track because the Grand Prix organizers, um, they d- incorrectly deployed a recovery vehicle um, to pick up Carlos Sainz's car because he was one who caused the red flag in the first place. Um, and a certain Sky Sports commentator tried to blame Pierre for not being able to see that recovery vehicle on track and then kept bending over backwards trying to justify why Pierre was in the wrong when, as I emphasize, he almost freaking died. Um, uh, the race resumed over two hours later when it like the weather finally eased up and everybody had their fill of freaking out on social media about the comment uh, about Gasly and um, because of the so every every Formula One race has a three hour clock uh, that starts uh, at lights out and has to be finished before the end of those three hours and if not you just wait until those three hours expire and then finish that following lap so because it took another two 
two hours for the race to resume. Um, the race was only 28 laps long. Um, and, um, basically confused pretty much everyone because nobody knew what was happening or um, what was going to be happening with the championship because Max was in the position of being able to clinch uh, the driver's championship, but nobody really knew what was going on, um, which you saw from all 8,000s of the DMs that I sent you um, when you woke up the next morning. I did. I got did you watch the race? And I was like, of course not. It's not convenient for me. And I also got like, oh my gosh, Pierre almost died. And Max won. We think he won. We're not sure. No one knows what's going on. The FIA isn't saying anything. And I was like, what is going on? What is happening? I was like, also, yeah. Pierre almost died. Like, what? I was like, I didn't see any major crash. What happened? And you were like, just watch watch the video. And I was like, okay. So it was it was just like pure it was bad. chaos. Pure chaos. Yeah. I don't know. I it's it's for those of you listening as a podcast and not on YouTube, I'm just flailing my arms because it was just pure madness. But um yeah, because Max one but no one actually celebrated yeah. or knew I don't know it was just weird. yeah because everybody everybody was expecting that because full race distance was not met the race would have been at most awarded half points I mean they were um, Sky Sports was going on for the entire time about this um, table that the FIA had released about, you know, if this amount of race distance was completed, this is how many points would be, um, you know, given to, to the drivers based on where they finished in the top 10. Um, so, and this all happened because in 2021 at Spa, the race was given full points, even though it was a two lap long race under the safety car in pouring rain. It was also George Russell's uh, very first podium when he was at Williams. Um, so everybody was running on the assumption that they were going to have this shortened, um, you know, amount of points. So Max would not have had enough points to become champion, except the FIA who somebody from the FIA had to have been listening, you know, you know, to the broadcast, to any one of the, the many international broadcasts that are covering the F1 race, um, where everybody is saying that they're, this race is going to be awarded partial points. And they just chose not to clarify that the rule basically actually meant that if the race was red flagged and could not be resumed, then partial points would be awarded. But Part, um, Suzuka was um, resumed and finished under the checkered flag um, and under basically green flag conditions, if you're thinking in NASCAR terms. Um, so full points ultimately were awarded, but no one knew, so no one could celebrate in that moment. Yeah. It was just, again, pure chaos. Pure madness. Yeah. The, the fact that David Coulthard, who was doing the post-race interviews for the podium, had to be the one to tell Max that he won the Drivers' Championship was one of the funniest moments I think I've ever seen. Obviously, I haven't watched Formula One for so many years, but I think that that's one of the funniest moments in Formula One. Yeah. I did watch that, like, interaction the and the replay or whatever, and it was very funny because Max was, like, or the whole entire... I don't know where if it was that or... In the cool down room when Max, someone told Max that he won and he's like, no, I didn't. He's like, I didn't win. I'm not Yeah, that was the cool down room. Like, and they're like, yes, you did. And he was like, oh, really? <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah it, I don't know. It, it took a couple days to, for it to really sink in for, for everyone. I mean, like, like even Christian Horner, like the next day was like, we're still trying to get clarification on that. Well, because it was the yeah, next race so too maybe. when they were like, oh, now you're really champion. And it's like, well, no, he, he has been. Like, you guys just, you know, yeah. didn't get the memo. <laughs> but he is. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. But... And obviously the, the biggest problem was that um, they couldn't get the audio call of it, of it in the car of Horner congratulating Max for Drive to Survive. So obviously that was like the biggest problem with the entire thing. You know, other than the fact that Pierre Gasly almost died and they were all justifying as to why it was his fault. 
We had some production issues. <laughs> Just one or two. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, that was a great recap, Catherine. Thank you for that. I didn't I have tried. to call. Tra- I didn't have to call track limits on you. You did so good. Um, but that brings us to our Suzuka predictions. So, Catherine, for your podium this weekend, who do you have? I have, um, I, I, I really do think that Max is going to come back and punch the field in the throat um, and, and say, oh, you think I, I'm washed out because I couldn't win in Singapore? Well, here I am. Um, so I've got my, my podium is Max P1. I have, I have Carlos continuing his streak of being totally awesome. And so I have Carlos in P2 and I have Lando in P3. Solid podium. Absolutely solid. Thanks. I also think Max is going to come back with a vengeance because he is absolutely pissed about Singapore. And I think he's just over it. So, yeah, I have Max P1, Carlos P2, and I have Lewis Hamilton P3. I think he's going to have another uh, strong, strong showing. So, sorry. Catherine. Another another strong showing and a, a sneaky grab of points. <laughs> yes, exactly. A little sneaky sneak. So, um, like you have then, to, you have to give him credit. Yeah, give credit where credit's due. You get points how you get points. If it's like one way or another, he's getting them. He's number three in the uh, the points right now. So, congrats to him. He's he's doing it. So yeah. Um. Okay. So, who do you have for pole? I have your boy Carlos Sainz. I love this. I love this so much and it pains me. I put Max for staff. <laughs> um, I want to put Carlos because I feel like Carlos has been doing so, so well in qualifying. But I think Max is just going to blow everyone out of the water all weekend long because, he, again, he's just pissed from Singapore. So coming back with a that's fair with a chip on his shoulder. So my favorite prediction to make P10. P10 is the last place that you earn a point. You get one single point. It is my favorite one to pick. Catherine, who is your P10 this week? My P10 this week is Alex Albon from Williams. I am just, I am really willing Williams to bounce back. They've they've had a little bit of a a tough run of it, which was expected in Singapore, but I I really just, I want to see Williams doing well again. So I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving Alex the points there or the point. Okay, for my P10, I have Akon. I think he's going to maybe recover from his bad birthday. <laughs> yeah, we, we can only hope that he's able to finish a race. That was just really tough for, for him and for us to, to watch. That was, that was just really, that was rough last week. Not a good week for him. So I have yeah. Akon. Um, biggest surprise of the weekend, Catherine. Um, I have um, a top eight finish for Liam Lawson. I I was originally thinking top five, but with the way, you know, we've got the Red Bulls, the Mercedes, the Ferraris, um, and the McLarens all driving, I think that Liam Lawson finishing in the top eight would be a little bit of an an upset compared to some of the other drivers in the top of the field. And I think that with his, you know, familiarity and experience at Suzuka in Super Formula, I think that this is something that we can definitely I I think that this is something that we can expect. I really like this. I think it's going to be really interesting to see him come into this uh, race having experience at this track. So I think it'll be super interesting to see where he ends up. And I I hope he, you know, does well, obviously. Always wishing for him to do well. Um, So turn of events for me here. (laughs) Um, I'm predicting that Sargent will have a good race. So, you know, that, that seat is his to lose. I'm, I'm thinking maybe he will, uh, you know, turn things around. He finished a race last week. He was very, you know, not memorable, but I, you know, he didn't DNF. He didn't cause damage. Um, so I'm going to have him having a good race this weekend. I like that. Let's let's go for it. Yeah, Yeah. Right. And on the flip side, who is going to do a dumb, Catherine? Well, in a turn of events for me, I don't have anything Ferrari related in my who's going to do a dumb um, for once. Are you okay? I, <laughs> Are you okay? I know. 
I know, but I think if they're going to let Carlos Sainz be their lead driver and their lead race strategist, then I think that they're going to be okay. Um, Honestly, are they paying him double because now he's pulling double duty? Like, he's he's running I strategy mean, and he's should. driving. Yeah, I so I, I think that George's streak of not-so-great luck is going to continue. I just feel like he has been trying so freaking hard to get himself a podium, to get himself a win, that it's breaking his brain a little bit. And I think that he's he's really too much in his own head, which is why he, you know, had last week's accident and why he's, you know, was forecasted a podium that he did not get two races ago. Um, so I, I think that he's unfortunately going to continue on this little bit, little, uh, yip streak he's having. Yeah. No, I, uh, it's like I the yips, right. but for formula one. Also, um, to go back to you, not putting Ferrari in this category. Did you see that they messed up their garages and put Carlos on both yes. of them? And they didn't give so they've already done they've already done a dumb for the weekend. I just I love that how is, historic this like team is. It's not like it's their first year in Formula One. They've like how do they mess things up so badly? Like I just wanna know. Yeah. How how I do you can't. not how do, how do you look at two garages and see two number 55s and two giant faces. And I know that, like, a lot of these people are, like, locals. They're they're not, you know, in the, you know, they're not with the team. Um, but, like, there's two drivers, and it's not like Carlos has a clone, which I think would be kind of funny. But also, it was Ferrari that it had, like, it, it was, like, it wasn't any other team. It was Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oops. Oh, anyways, so what's, your do- um, what's your dumb? So, uh, this one pains me, but I, I, I just feel like it's a, it's a call. I don't think Yuki's gonna have a strong showing in his home race. I just don't. We have a, we have a what a DNS and a DNF back to back. I just, I really think he's struggling a little bit. George has yeah. the yips, and I think Yuki has a not the yips, but something even worse. I think he's, he's really in his head about this whole contract thing and I just I don't know it's yeah it's it, it, well, this so. isn't like you know Esteban Ocon's car you know he had two mechanical failures in a row like this is or one one of these to be fair to Yuki was mechanical um his his yeah. DNS was was a was a car issue but yeah it's and I mean also the you know last week it was contact with Perez in the beginning of the race that led to a coolant leaks but Either way, he the last the last race he finished he he finished P thirteen or P fifteen because Lawson finished P thirteen. So yeah. it's it's it really hasn't been looking good for for him. And he's he's gotta you know know the rumors and you know his his contract for next season is riding on his performance just as is Lawson's and just as is Ricardo. And you know going going back to to the beginning, we have three drivers for two seats for twenty twenty four. And so unfortunately, one of these three very talented drivers is going to be a little bit screwed yeah I know but I don't know obviously hoping he does well but I just think this is something he's gonna do something this weekend so but this brings us into another one of my favorite things that we talk about is (laughs) how can Red Bull win the constructors title so Catherine can Red Bull win this weekend that is my question Yes, they can. And I think it's actually easier than last week in Singapore. Because last week in Singapore, Mercedes basically had to have a double DNF or a double not score um, in order for Red Bull to clinch the Constructors title, which just, let's be realistic. Like, yes, they had one DNF, but that it wasn't very likely that it was going to happen last week. Um, but this time, um, Red Bull has to outscore Mercedes by any amount Um, and they have to make sure that Ferrari does not outscore them by more than 24 points. So it is a lot more likely that Red Bull will win the Constructors title in Suzuka, Um, and considering how, like we said earlier, this is like a pseudo-home race for them, I can can see, I I think there's a pretty decent shot of it happening. Yeah, I mean, Ferrari having to outscore them by 24 points, that's a big ask of Ferrari, so. Yeah. I think uh, my money is on Red Bull taking it home this weekend. And then my second favorite, uh, 
question for you at the end of the podcast. Can Max Verstappen win the Drivers' Championship this weekend? No, he can't. Um, okay, good to and, know. <laughs> but but also, I think that we like I when I talked about this earlier on, right right after the summer break, I also said that it wasn't going to be very likely that he was going to win the title in in Suzuka. Um, he would have had to have scored max points in every every race from the end of the, you know the end of the summer break to now, which he has not done. I said it was going to be more likely that he was going to um, clinch it in two weeks in Qatar, um, where he only needs to have a hundred and forty six point lead ahead of Perez, ahead of his teammates. Only. Only 146 points. Like, he's at 156 points, I think, right now. But he would be have to be in the 180s um, leaving Suzuka, which just mathematically doesn't make sense. Um, so I think, as I've been saying, I think he's going to clinch it in Qatar. Yeah. Cool. Well, good to know. We have yes. one more week with him not being world champion. Yes. Also, I don't know if we addressed this in our recap pod of Singapore, I don't think we did because I was still, like, reeling from Carlos's win. My whole plan to just, like, wipe 2023 away because <laughs> Max is just going to run away with it, like, went to shit, and I'm really upset, but... I mean, okay. I could have told you that. I know, I know, that's fine. Even but... as a Red Bull fan, I didn't think that they were going to win every race. Leave it to Singapore. I wonder if he'll ever win Singapore in his... uh racing lifetime i think that would be really interesting if like singapore becomes like his white whale yeah interesting we shall late see. night thoughts late night pod thoughts um so do you have any final thoughts for the japanese grand prix i know i have one i think it's going to be before i just cut you off <laughs> go right ahead um let me give you my thoughts um i think Max is going to run away with it. And then it's going to be just absolute madness for the rest of the points. Yes. I agree. I think that it's Because I feel like normally it's like we have Max and then it's like a solid second, third, whatever. And then there's like a battle for like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But yeah. I think it's going to be Max just like takes off and leaves everybody in the dust. And then I think the rest of it honestly is up for grabs. Yeah, I I think, you know, one of the highlights of the season, um, and I think that we've been getting, like, highlights of the season every race since the summer break has ended, um, but one of the really big highlights was the, the close battle for first and just how everyone was fighting, and I am really excited to see more of that. Whether or not Max ends up running away with it, um, I think that that's been really good and it still makes things very exciting and I'm really interested to see how it's going to shake out this weekend. Yeah, I think everyone bringing upgrades and, you know, the cars are getting closer and closer and it's no longer, like, just the Red Bulls. I think everyone else is really catching up, not only to Red Bull because I think the margins are getting smaller, but also to each other. And so I think the gap between everybody is kind of evening out and the playing field is kind of a little bit, you know, more level. Um and yeah, watching last week, how everyone was really like so, so close. It was exciting. So I think it's going to be an interesting weekend. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be really good. I'm excited. Uh, make sure you join us on Instagram at going.off.track for coverage of the practice sessions and the race and any news and anecdotes all weekend long. And Monday, we will have our race recap episode dropping at nine o'clock eastern wherever you listen to your podcast that's been our podcast for the day guys thanks for going off track with us